Avoidant attachment styles are often known for leaving a relationship all of a sudden and even completely out of the blue, often leaving their exes wondering if there was ever a meaningful connection for them there to begin with. They often leave others feeling confused, heartbroken, and wondering what they did wrong or what they could have done differently. But there is always so much more to this story. In today's video, we are going to cover the real reasons avoidant attachment styles leave relationships all of a sudden. And we're gonna answer an even more important burning question, which is do they ever regret it? We'll talk about what they're secretly feeling and experiencing after a breakup and we will talk about the specific context through which an avoidant attachment style may really regret breaking up with their ex. In this video, I wanna to talk to you a little bit about whether or not dismissive avoidant attachment styles regret leaving relationships. So before I tell you the answer, there's not really a clean cut answer, um, but more specific scenarios where this is likely to happen. So I'm going to take you through some of those very specific scenarios. Scenario number one, a dismissive avoidant, date somebody, get into the dating stage of relationships, decide um, perhaps partially because of flaw finding, which is, I have other videos on this channel about, but essentially at a high level is a dismissive avoidance sometimes will look for flaws in a partner as they start to get close um, because it's a subconscious strategy to avoid vulnerability and avoid um, feeling unsafe. And so sometimes it will be something the subconscious mind, it's not even a conscious intentional process, but the subconscious mind of a DA will use to push people away and kind of keep them at bay. Um, and so that's a very common dynamic for dismissive avoidance. And in that case, when it's just the dating stage, they do often really invest in those flaws. Like they usually think, okay, and, and to be quite honest, sometimes the flaws are actual incompatibility. So sometimes it's like, hey, this person wants something from a relationship that I don't, or we have differences that really are not like a good place to be starting dating from. But a lot of times I've seen them be really small things, but the DA is very invested in it. So I've seen people say things like, oh, um, the person showed up five minutes late or the person, um, you know, sent me this text message back with poor punctuation or things like that. And, and like, that's, you know, not necessarily a reasonable reason to stop dating somebody, but if somebody shows up five minutes late, a lot of these things are basically solvable problems. Um, if the DA thought that they could communicate. So flaw finding can be something that whether it's, a uh, realistic reason to end a relationship or not. Like you could have just said, Hey, can you try to be on time more? That's important to me. And then obviously if the person was never on time and that was this huge non-negotiable, then, okay, you have an incompatibility, but sometimes if there's communication, the person would make an effort and they would be on time and the relationship could continue or the dating could continue. Um, but D is kind of assign it like a, this is not working and that's it. Um, so it's not always the case, but it is fairly common. And in that case, when a DA is flaw finding and it's in the dating stage, often they do believe that that's like their truth. Um, and it is their truth on some level, right? They're just prioritizing like security and not being vulnerable because that's what's worked for them. Um, so it is their truth, but it's not necessarily like the highest expression of themselves if they were to work through it, if that makes sense. So in that case, generally DAs do not regret leaving a relationship when they do that. Um, there's not much of an attachment formed yet. Um, the, the need for security is a really big need for most DAs, um, pretty much all DAs. Um, and they will want to keep that person at bay and, and do that and focus on themselves. So in that case, generally, no, there are other cases though, where DAs definitely regret, um, leaving relationships. And one of the biggest ones is when a DA has been in a long-term relationship. I have yet to see an exception to this, um, where a DA has been in a long-term relationship meaning like, um, you know, more than a couple of years and through that long-term relationship, whether it was long distance, whether it was close, um, sometimes at the beginning, usually at the beginning, dismissive avoidance will get out of that relationship because of common themes, fear of vulnerability, the relationship just not working, maybe a difference in attachment style, some of these common things we see. Um, but generally also a huge one is that they don't know how to communicate their needs from a partner. So even though the partner, if, if they are with somebody who's more anxiously attached, that partner may be trying to show up so much and meet their needs, 
but sometimes they're not meeting like the right needs because the DA is not communicating their truth. And the reason the DA doesn't communicate their needs is because they usually don't have any modeling or conditioning to even believe that a relationship is supposed to be something interdependent. In other words, something where we mutually exchange our needs being met. And so DAs often sometimes feel like unseen, misunderstood. Um, they don't know how to open themselves a lot of the time to receive from other people or to express what they need to receive. Um, and so they just stay super self-reliant, which kind of stops them from really deeply attaching. And then, you know, when their partner's like, Hey, I have needs, they can feel like, well, wait, why am I supposed to meet your needs? Like, we're just supposed to be on our own and then have a, a nice time together and hang out and have fun. And that's it. And so sometimes there can be like a little bit of confusion there at one level, but when a long-term relationship ends for a DA, the most common by far pattern that I see is that a dismissive avoidant um, feels the relationship end immediately feels free, feels the sense of like freedom, like from their, their fears of the relationship, from vulnerability, from, um, feeling trapped or different core wounds being triggered around like commitment fears, things of that nature. And then usually about like six weeks to three months later, depending on how much this person's trying to repress their feelings, they start really hurting. And, and, um, part of it is that they're mourning like the comfort and security of a relationship. And those are usually generally very high needs for a dismissive avoidant that they don't realize they're getting from that relationship on some level. Um, but also because um, there's there's like this, this space that takes place where eventually, originally DAs get really good at repressing their emotions, but they can only do that for so long. And then eventually some of these things come online and they generally start to feel like really lonely and disconnected. And then don't really know how to reach out to people to, to soothe through others. So it's almost like that feeling of loneliness um, or, you know, like their needs not being met and that loss and that grieving can almost be like this extended grief period because there aren't really source like sources or strategies or resources they use very effectively to let other people in to help fill that void. So if you look at traditional breakups, like let's say two securely attached people break up, what do you see? they go to friends, they go to family, they spend more time with other people. It's helping to sort of like heal up that void a little bit of what's been lost through that person who was meeting those needs. But in the DA context, they generally like won't get emotional needs met um, from other relationships, won't open up and be vulnerable. And even if they weren't fully vulnerable in their romantic relationship and they were still keeping things at bay, at least there was something there. Whereas like, that's not something they generally try to do in other relationships. And what I find a lot too is that dismissive avoidance will um, get a lot of like intellectual needs met, like comfort, security, fun, harmony, intellectual connection from people like friends, family members, but emotional connection um, is almost something that's parked and compartmentalized. And so sometimes there's an element of emotional connection that happens in romantic relationships that when that's gone, it feels like that void lasts for so long. And so I've very often seen dismissive avoidance when they've been in more long-term relationships, have these like extended grieving processes in a breakup. And um, by the way, <laughs> I'll tell you really quick as well, if you are going through this, and I'm gonna say one other thing after this as well, but um, if you're going through this and you wanna just work through a breakup, go for the How to Heal for a Breakup course. You can check it out for seven days for free and um, you can get through that in seven days. It's like uh, probably like a two hour course, hour and a half course. And it will give you exactly the mechanics of why a breakup hurts and exactly what to do. And it will really help. It's not going to take away a hundred percent of your pain in the sitting of the course, but it's going to help you get rid of like 30 to 50% more immediately, like that sting. And then it's going to give you really good strategies and clarity for exactly what to do and steps to take in your life on a daily basis to recondition some of the pain points that are there and the unmet needs. So you can have these new ways of getting those needs met and heal and, and feel like that last 50%, you're making a lot of traction in a fairly short period of time after. So, um, so the other thing I'll say too, is that, um, when dismissive avoidance go through this extending great grieving process, which is quite common after long-term relationships is that they won't, they like, won't let anybody see it. Like a lot of the time, like they won't 
you won't know if you're the ex, you won't know. Um, if you are the, they may reach out indirectly and say like, Hey, how are you? Or something like that. And, but they're not sharing with the ex, right. They're not sharing with their friends and family. Like they're, they're fine, but sometimes they're, they're actually going through something more privately because they don't feel comfortable or safe, or they give it painful meaning like, Oh, I'm weak or I'm shameful. If I share with people that I'm actually hurting over the breakup or that I made a mistake because I pushed the person away that maybe now I kind of regret pushing away. And so, um, you know, they, they may keep that private and you may not really see it, but I can't tell you how many times in my client practice, I would see dismissive avoidance and they would be really hurting over a breakup. And I'd be like, who do you go to? Like, who do you share with? Who do you talk to about this? And they'd be like, I come here. I don't really tell anybody else. Um, or they would come to me after like being in that state for like three months, four months, and then be like, I don't know what to do. I've just been stuck in this like really bad feeling. Um, so my heart goes out to anybody who's going through that. Uh, other attachment cells obviously go through their own versions of that and that grieving process. Um, but once we understand the mechanics of grief, it's so much easier to move through it a little bit better and quicker. Um, so anyways, I hope this all makes sense. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please like, share, and subscribe to this channel if you hang out here sometimes, if you enjoy the content. Um, I would really appreciate it. And I will see you in the next video, which will be tomorrow. Um, so have a great day. And let me know in the comments below if you have any other questions about this process as a whole.